Good morning all. Christ is born. He is born indeed. So it's wonderful to be here this morning that we continue our celebration of Christmas. The Nativity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's wonderful. So welcome to all of you, to those who are here with me this morning and to those who are at home, members from Faith and Grace. God bless you and Merry Christmas. Uh, regarding the order of service for this morning, uh, we follow this order that's been printed. Uh, and I have a few, one thing that I'd like to, to mention to you, and that's in page four, the hymn that is after confession and absolution, the hymn number 349, and the words are okay. No problem. The only issue is the title, Be Ark the Glad Sound. And I wrote, Ark the Herald Angel Sing. And that's gonna be the hymns at the end, but not this moment. So just for you to know. Well, we are ready to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and continue this important celebration for all of us. We begin with a silence prayer. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth.
sin in God's mercy, let us examine our lives and consciences. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have seen in thought, word, and deed by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grants you pardon, forgiveness, and remissions of all your sins. In thy stead, and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I, a called and ordained servant of the world, forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, Bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you, and also with you. Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading for Christmas Day is from the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, chapter 62, a few verses from that chapter. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up 
build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up a signal over the peoples. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your salvation comes. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. And they shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. chapter 3. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by His grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, 
which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby laying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. We confess our Christian faith, speaking the Apostle Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whose birth we celebrate this morning. Amen. With God's help on this Christmas day, we will speak about two kings. Our first is the Emperor Caesar Augustus. And it came to pass in those days that there, were, there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus. Here is the first king of Luke chapter 2. When a decree comes out from Caesar Augustus, it is saying loud and clear, Attention, people of the known world, behold your king and savior. It is all there in the words if you listen carefully. He is Caesar Augustus. It is not really his name, but his title. His real name is Gaius Julius Caesar Octavian. That, that Julius Caesar part is there because he is the adopted great nephew of Julius Caesar of years past. Anyway, Caesar is the title given to the ruler of the Roman Empire. It means that he is the emperor of the known world, even if all the known world does not agree with him. So he is your king. Augustus is not his name, but another honor given by the Roman Senate. It means revered one. Your king then is Caesar, the revered one. And the title implies that this king is more than human, a little bit divine. Caesar Augustus, king, divine one. And as your emperor, he is considered to be the savior of the world. It makes sense that he lives in, a, in an elegant palace in Rome, at the center of civilization the center of the known world. For this shows his status and position. He is surrounded by his elite guard to show his power and authority. He is attended by philosophers and senators, imparting his, window, his wisdom and knowledge. And when he speaks, everyone listens. So behold how this king and savior goes about his work of ruling and saving. He sends out a decree demanding that all his subjects return to their hometowns in order to register for a census. And this is not an option. It is a command. You have to do it. And when the Caesar speaks, you better listen, listen up and do what he says. He is your king and savior. And that's how it is. And the reason for the census is so that Caesar continue collecting taxes from you in order to preserve the known world for you with your money. That's how it works. I am the king and you are my subjects because I have more power than you do. I need your taxes and I will punish you if you do not contribute. There are enemies to this kingdom and if necessary, you will go to fight and even die for me. I am important and you are not. Because I am the Caesar, the revered one. And you know that it is how it works. But Luke mentions in chapter 2 another king. This is the second king. 
that Luke mentioned. Caesar Augustus might have been a decent king as far as kings go, but he is not savior. You need a better savior than that. So my friends in Christ, rejoice this day. On this Christmas day, we do not celebrate a merry Caesar Augustus Mass. This is Christmas, for the angel declared a far better savior to the shepherds. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. We shall be to all people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lay in a manger. We move from Caesar Augustus to Christ the Lord. Instead of palace in comfy cradle, he is swallowed up and laid in a manger. Instead of senators and philosophers, it is shepherds from the field who rush in to stare at the newborn. No armies are present, although the shepherds report of the singing of the heavenly host. Compared to the pomp and the splendor and ceremony of Caesar, this baby is just a little blip in history. Born in Bethlehem and hardly anyone notices. The difference could not be greater, but not the way you might think. This baby is the Lord. He is Yahweh, the great I Am, creator of the heavens and the earth. In a mystery far beyond our understanding, God has become flesh. The eternal Son of God, begotten of his Father from eternity, is now a newborn. The omnipresent Lord is a star wrapped in swaddling clothes and hardly able to move. The all-seeing Lord of the universe has hardly opened his eyes. He is almighty and all-powerful, yet he has to learn to coordinate his fingers and discover his toes and with time learn to walk. But despite the human youth and frailty, he remains fully the Lord God Almighty. Even when he hangs on the cross and dies for the sins of the world, he remains fully the Lord God Almighty. It does not require you taxes to do his work or accomplish his mission, and yet he delights. He delights to use people and give as his instruments, as he has Joseph and Mary, and even, even Caesar does God's will, so that Jesus is born in Bethlehem, the city of David, because he is of the house and the line of David. This baby is the Lord, the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the real deal. He is the one that God has promised through the ages, the one for whom his people have waited through long centuries of darkness and suffering. And here he is. And no matter how things may appear, no matter how the manger and cross look, this Christ will not fail in what he has come to do. And his term of, of office will never run out. There will never be a time where he ceases to have mercy for you. This baby is the Savior, Christ the Lord. He is born to save and this salvation is eternal. And when he goes out to war, it will not be with you as 
troops at the front to die for, for king and empire, against barbarians at the fringes of the empire. No, he will go alone and defeat the devil and your real enemies of sin, death, and grave by way of a cross. And here is the really good news. The angel says, unto you is born a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. There it is, unto you. This Savior is not here to save the world in a general sort of a way, but he's born to save you. That means you. He is born with flesh and blood because you are flesh and blood. Because your flesh and blood get sick. He will bear all of your sickness and afflictions in his body to destroy them. Because he loves you so much as to number every hair on your head. He has a scalp that will later accept a crown of thorns for you. Because he desires the death of no one and earnestly desires that you have eternal life. He has become flesh to die in your place on the cross. That is the good news that God promised long ago and that angels proclaim. That's the reason for this birth. He is born to die for the sins of the whole world. Not just the generic world. He is born to die for you. He has accomplished this. He has won your salvation on the cross. And as he did so, he did not just save the world in general, but all the individuals in particular. He dies personally for everyone who has ever been, is now, and yet to come. All people, of all times, of all places, and that would include you. So that you might live, and so that you might be certain, He gives you this forgiveness and life personally to you. That's what Christmas is all about. The Lord taking on flesh and blood to save you, to die for your sins, to forgive you and give you eternal life in heaven with Him when this life is over. That's it. Oh, one last thing. Caesar will send his armies forth to conquer the nations, to expand the empire, and the people will fall in line as subjects with odds of loyalty at the point of a sword. But not so your real Savior, Jesus Christ. As he requires nothing from you, he also forces nothing on you, he declares. I win forgiveness and peace, life and salvation for you, and I give them to you freely. But I will not force this gift upon you. I will not make you be my people. If you do not want forgiveness and peace, life and salvation, you need not follow me. If you do not want eternity in heaven, I will not compel you to paradise. If you want another Savior, you may follow another. But keep in mind, He cannot save you. Friends in Christ, this Lord Jesus Christ, King and Savior, does not rule His kingdom by force, but by forgiveness and mercy. That makes His gift of grace and life all the more gift and all the more precious. Caesar Augustus is long dead, alone with his empire. Princes and rulers, great men and causes will come and go, but they are not your savior. 
Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and remains your Savior now and forever, abundantly, pouring out his gift of forgiveness, eternal life and salvation to you on Christmas Day and every day, for you are his and he is yours. That's what the angel was talking about when he announced the good news of great joy that was for all people, that the Savior had been born. Your Savior had been born. He is Christ the Lord. Thanks God. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the faith to greet the news of the world made flesh with joy and peace. For the obedience of faith to walk in the light of his way. For the strength to be steadfast in this faith. And for a spirit fit to proclaim this message to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For voices to proclaim faithfully the word of God. For listening ears that we grow in knowledge and faith by the preaching of the word. For those who deliver to us the means of grace in which we behold God's glory and receive it with joy and thanksgiving. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the church here and throughout the world. For every place where the world has planted hope and displayed God's saving glory to the nations, and for the homes in which we teach this word to our children and live it out in holy lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For peace in the world, for an end to violence, for the restoration of hope and life is still suffering from the effects of the pandemic, for justice, for the will to protect life from its beginning to its natural end, and for those in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who suffer any need of body or soul, for the sick, for the aged, for the grieving, and for those in their last days, especially for, we pray for Sue, Sheldon, Bogus, Geraldine, Anne, Mike, Rainer, Maria, and family, for Ritva, for Marcus, for Risto, for Lisette and family, for the family of Teresa who passed away this week, for Erin, for Bill and Vicky, for Pastor James, for Kathleen, for Stacy and Son, for Karen, for Nancy, for Mirja, for Maria, for Patricia, for Sandra, for Dennis and Sarah, for Doreen, for Grace, for Nancy, for Marcia, for Matthew, for Nancy, for Harry, for Mark, for Elsie, for Al and Ann, for Shirley and Keith, for Mark, for Frank, for Sarah, for, for Delbert, for Fred, for Bill and Sandy, for Lloyd and Elsie, for Ed, for Walter and Donna, for Anna, for Becky, for John, for Irene, for Christina, for Stacy and family. As well, we pray for those whom we name in our hearts. That the Lord be their healing, strength, comfort, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We pray for God's love and compassion to abound as we walk through this challenging season. We ask for wisdom for those who bear the load of making decisions with widespread consequences. We pray for those who are suffering due to COVID-19 and for all who are caring for them. We pray for misinformation to be curbed and that extreme fear may take no hold in hearts and minds. 
as well we exercise good sense, we ask, Lord, that you gra your grace and mercy provide us with faith and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all things needful to this body and life, and for all things profitable to our salvation, let us pray in the name of Christ, the world made flesh, in whom we behold the glory of the eternal Trinity, now and to, a, to the end of the ages. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Before singing, <laughs> before singing our, our final hymns, I just want to wish all of you a Merry Christmas, you and your family, and remember that we continue with the live streaming service on Sunday at 10 a.m. I'm still going to be sending some, well, the order of service to you. And also, if you need any things from, from us, please call the office. And we are still providing private confessions and as well private Holy Communions and other activities for you, even though that we are in this lockdown. So you could call at, at the office, 519-685-9700. God bless you and have a blessed day.